In the previous video blog, some vintage colour photographs had inspired me to go out and see if I could recreate something similar using modern film and a pre-war Kodak Brownie camera. But I quickly discovered that the pre-war Kodak Brownies needed quite a lot of modification to work with modern film. So in this video blog, I've ordered two newer 1950s 120 Kodak Brownies, and I'm going to see what we can get from them and explore the way our grandparents photographed their world. This time we took the old car to Ainsford in Kent, a village that would give us an old world backdrop and there we could put a few rolls of expired Portra and T-Max through the brownies. Shooting with the smaller post-war 120 brownies is a lot easier as we don't have to modify the film spool and the window showing the frame number is on the correct side. But there are a few things you need to know to get the most out of one of these antique cameras. Viewfinders. The viewfinders are okay in portrait, but the landscape viewfinder will cut your shot halfway down what you see in the viewfinder. So you will need to compensate for this by either framing down slightly or going wider. Light leaks. Even the newer Kodak brownies leak light in a couple of ways. The first way is the window that shows you which frame you're on will leak light, so much so that it will actually print the frame number onto the negative if exposed to bright sunlight, so keep it covered when you're not using it. Secondly, the film doesn't wind on very tight, making it quite compressible when handling. This can cause the light leaks that you're seeing on the top and the bottom of the images. As I am. Fully. Exposure. There is almost never enough light to shoot 150th at f16 in this country. Even with faster film stocks, it helps to push your film one, two, even three stops in development. So try to shoot in bright sunlight, which can seem counterintuitive and is probably why people in old pictures are often squinting. But shooting into the sun would require a lot of fill light and because of the way the brownie is set up, you can't simply just expose for the shadows. Motion blur. Well, 1 50th of a second is actually quite a slow shutter speed, so objects in serious motion will appear blurred in the images. You might have to avoid action shots, or at least do them very carefully. Focus. Although you should be able to focus at 6 feet to infinity, it's often soft, so stick to full length images. These cameras were unfortunately not designed for close ups. And lastly, it's still very easy to get a double exposure, so always wind on the film as soon as you press the shutter. You can always wind it back later if you want to do a double exposure. So what did we learn? Well, I'm not normally much of a gearhead. As long as I've got a decent lens and enough control, I can probably get pretty much anything I want out of any camera. The point of the brownie experiment was to see what would happen when the gear made you think like a photographer from another time. And the camera really forces you to shoot in a way you wouldn't normally, to get images within the limitations of the camera and not your imagination. And these limitations mean that you have to totally change the way you think about making pictures. And it's not just the glass or the physical aspects of the tool that make you take the pictures that your grandparents and your great-grandparents did. These limitations force you to relate to your subject differently. Where you cannot control your camera, you start to control your subject and your environment. Things like poses and expressions become more contrived because action shots would give you motion blur. And people start to look more serious because being posed makes them aware that they're being photographed and expressions get harsher as they try to squint in the bright sunlight. We think people from the past were stiff and didn't smile, but that's only because the limitations of photography at the time meant that it didn't make sense to. So it's a reminder that their lives were just as colourful and vibrant as ours are today, but that they didn't have the technology to record their world in the same way we do now. But if they did, we'd look at the past very differently. So join us next week when we try and find an art gallery in a derelict fort, dress Jamie up as a crow and shoot it on 35mm medium format and large format cameras in order to compare the pictures. And this cat might have moved by then. Thank you. Thank you.